to shore, Jim. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Jim Kerr. I'm all about sort of helping leaders and their organizations become indispensable. That's Mark Kumachek. His dream is to help 100,000 people dream. Look at the sparkle. It's just I don't know amazing. what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pleased to introduce uh, today's guest, Joe Iannone. And Joe's a proven business development leader, has a strong rec reputation and track record in the commercial industrial packaging space. Uh, he's also the founder and facilitator of this really cool group called the Alliance, which represents a new way of businesses choosing to align strategically and altruistically. Joe, welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. And thank you, gentlemen. And just so happens to be my birthday. So I don't know how we manage that, but this is a great <laughs> gift. Thank you very much. Uh, happy birthday, Mark! More sparkles. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> I think I went like this. I think it was a thumbs up that did it. I don't know. But uh, Joe, uh, let's jump right in. I want to ask you. I know you're in a period of transition right now. What have been some of the greatest aha moments as you've uh, traversed uh, the sort of current time and space? Yeah, um, Jim. You know, I, I view this as as these transformational points in our life, and I think you might be referring to one. Um, on May 1st, uh, I received a, a letter from the company I was with, so that's a little clue, that they needed to um, reduce the workforce uh, the, for financial, um, significant financial uh, challenge that they, they were having. I was there approximately two years. I was invited in as a business development manager, mostly for developing new accounts. Uh, I do have uh, a number of networks and connections uh, in the industry that I'm in. It happens to be medical device manufacturing and contract manufacturing. And uh, yeah, I was invited in and, uh, you know, I, I did, uh, I brought POs in, orders in, customers in. It was going very well, but being owned, owned by a holding company, there are challenges there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You never know that timing that they're ready to, uh, either move forward or, 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 you know, compress a bit and figure it out from there. So it, it seemed like that occurred myself and about 12 other key people in the company were advised a position was eliminated. Uh, and um, the vice president of sales and marketing, we became good friends. I still consider him a good friend and he tried to help me in any way he could. But it is a, it's one of those life lessons you have to take, uh, meet it as a challenge and Try to keep the emotion out of it, gentlemen, and you know how that works. You know, we want to get emotional over things. We have that um, lizard monkey brain syndrome that it's either fight yeah. or flee syndrome, which is probably a good reason if you're you're in a car accident, you don't want to think too logically. You just want to get out of there before the car blows up. Um, you know, so you, you have that. But then we're also blessed to have a prefrontal cortex where we filter that to determine now, okay, these are the facts. Now, what do I do? Uh, and also, how can I help others? You know, you, you, you kind of said, well, Joe, you, you, you got your own challenges, you know, but at the same time, sure, I'm going to, I'm going to, I went right to work, you know, it's a full time job looking for full time work, mm -hmm. as they say. So I, I went right to work for that. So yeah, that's one aha moment recently. A, a recent aha moment there, Joe, and you, you mentioned in our conversation beforehand, sometimes aha moments can be a pleasant thing and sometimes they can be a challenging thing. This is clearly a, one of those challenges. But if you could look back a little bit further in your leadership journey, your career journey, your life journey, for that matter, is there sure. another maybe aha moment that shaped you? Yeah, I mean, I can go back in the bench back in East Boston where I grew up and, you know, I came, uh, my, my parents moved me kicking and screaming to the South Shore, which was a bad thing when you're 14 year older, but it was a good thing when you mm -hmm. look back in the hindsight, I met my wife, um, went to school out here. Uh, we didn't have to lock our doors. <laughs> I mm -hmm. mean, now we do, but you know, that's a whole nother situation. Um, and, uh, but no, I would say going back, new, not too far, but I did form, you mentioned uh, the Alliance and during COVID, yeah. I, uh, I determined that, you know, looking from a customer centric perspective, um, you know, they, they had challenges and, you know, they, they came to me, uh, we did injection molding of parts, uh, mainly for the medical industry. We also did commercial industrial aerospace and, you know, and I would help them guide them, uh, to designers cause they needed a designer. And then I would find out that the des designers, and I know en enough of them, um, they're very good, especially the ones I know 
But the, a lot of the other ones would would take the 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 customer to a point and then I'll just let them drop off. And and I'm trying to say, I said, you have this this person you've helped. Why don't you just direct them to the next phase? Maybe a, a injection molder, a thermal form, or somebody that does printing, um, testing of a package. Uh, anything else along the line and uh they would have no, no answer for that so um at that moment i determined that there is a, a need to get uh, experts and, and companies um collectively together in an altruistic way it said so altruistic way means that you know that sure everybody wants to get an order and you want to get new leads that's what part of the alliance is about but it's it's also more than that. I mean, if I gave somebody 20 leads, I don't expect 20 leads coming back. What I expect is the customer will be happy. And it's just an option, by the way. We don't, our members, we don't, there's, there's no fee. You know, there's none of that. It's, uh, we, we have quarterly meetings. We, we, we have meetings in, in addition to that. But if, so, if somebody finds an opportunity, it's segregated throughout the uh, membership to see if one of them can help and and Mark, you, you know, probably you brought up a good point. A lot of us are competitors on, on the surface, mm -hmm. but we're not competitors because this is an opportunity for all of us to uh, see how each one of us may be able to help. And the, the the egos are left at the door, and it all it's all about that type of agape love. You know, they're they're from the Roman and Greeks. Uh, there were different definitions of love. You know, there's there's a, a love of brothers. There's a lot, you know, of family members. Uh, there's a love of, of eros, you know, a self-love. And there's other different types of love. But only agape, unconditional love, you know, offering that type of um, help in the business world, especially, is very difficult to find. And it seems to be the most valuable, especially these days, you know. So yeah. that, was an, uh, that was an aha moment, forming this alliance. Um and we just celebrated three years. Uh, I'm also gonna happy to say that both of you gentlemen have been presenters, and you're you were very gracious to come on. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. But what's you know, your I, what's your perspective? You guys were both on. You've seen some of the alliance. What's your what's your take on the alliance? Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, the thing that that's um, that really struck me was uh, the concept is sort of founded on the idea of um, you know all boats rise. So that, that notion of, of competition really is something that takes a back seat when that group is together. It's really about helping each other out. And I, and I thought that was a really cool thing. I know it started, you know, sort of as a, uh, a response to what was going on with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But what I really uh, appreciate um, among the members anyway was that they were really there and, and, and for each other and they wanted to help mm -hmm. each other out. And I'm wondering, you know, what do you think uh, businesses can do to sort of, I don't know, retrofit their strategies so they're more about that? They're more about really doing stuff for the good and not necessarily always just driving to profit. What's the easiest way to get there? Yeah, and, and look, both of you, you know, you're, you're into, Jim, transformational change, right? You know, um, and that's a type of transformational change. It's not about it's not about the me, it's about the we. It's, it's, it's funny, if you just simply took that letter M and flipped it over to we, it's just a whole different world. You know, it, it's a it's a way you wake up every morning. It's a way you do business. And in, 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 when I say do business, you know, business is personal, it's relationships, it's storytelling. Um, you know, there's a there's a quote, and, and I do like quotes. I I I, I I appreciate philosophy, which is the lover of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, you don't you don't have to go back as far as Socrates, which is one of the fa the founding fathers. But it's funny with him, you know he he respected bringing logic and truth and wisdom to the masses for no fee, um, mm -hmm. and you know for that he was tried. He wouldn't give into his you know in, into saying that you know like the the sophist of the day, or they were trying to be clever. Being wise and, and, and uh, trying to find the truth doesn't mean being clever. Because once you're clever, then it goes back to the me, right? How can I get something out of it? Uh -huh. But if, if you're willing to let go and, and incorporate the we philosophy, um, 
look, I mean, people have paid with their life, right? We we know that, but mm -hmm. it, it, it is you could might have to pay with your reputation or the, or the way you might lose some clients, you know, both of you guys know how that feels. Mm -hmm. But if you stick to your principles, um, you'll be better. People will respect you more. And, you know, then you'll help the right people for the right reasons. And you'll still make money. See, that's the other thing, too. You People think you just you give up opportunities because of, you have to change and you don't have to change. You have to I change the, in a good way. Sorry. I, no, I, I just want to say I love the philosophic imprint on kind of your approach to life, your leadership style. I think that clearly comes out in, in everything you're saying. I also want to kind of look back at just say, you know, from a career perspective, experience often shapes us as well. Was there a particular chapter or position in your career that had a impactful, um, I don't know, impactful shaping of your leadership style and approach to life? Um, you know, I, I've been I've been graced to work hard and you know get the get the rewards from it. I remember one company I worked for, I worked with them for quite a while, and I came out to be number one in the in the country as sales. I got the jacket, got the financial prize, the recognition, and at the same time, I I recognized that it was a team effort. Um, I I brought up the customer service team. I incorporated some of the production team. I mentioned other people. And it just felt better. It felt better to do that. Um, mm. And, but see, there's highs and lows. So, you know, we strive for the mountaintops, but guess what? We live in the valleys. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how many people live up on Mount Everest or K2 or any of those places, but I would say none. Uh, people have died trying to make it, but right. you have to, you have to, you have to live among the people and respect them. And, and it, it tends to get you far. So I've tried to do that with the companies I have, I have been with. And it's funny because that company, even though you, I won that award, within a month, uh, they were bought out by a company. And, you know, uh, and this, this goes back a while. So I have been through mm -hmm. this, this period of time before, and, and I kind of have a good sense of what happens. But they they let go of some of the key people. I, and, and again, I, I was that was back when I, I was let go. So, you know, you, you have those highs and lows in life. And I, I think if you're humble enough, you you respect that. And um and I would say one one other thing, if I if I can, is that um, and I think I, you guys know both about the IQ, the EI, and mm -hmm. SI principle. And you know, IQ is is and I'll use a doctor as a sense of that. So if there's a doctor, certainly you need all the credentials. Like if you're gonna say you're gonna have heart surgery, you go in, and you want that person to be the best of the best. Okay, we we know that. But then then again, you, you you're talking about emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is that doctor have, has done this long enough and they need to respond to something that happened the blood pressure went down and you need a response quickly you want to be able to know that person has the competence right it's like it's like sully sullenberg uh with the flight and mm, you know yes the, the birds cut the engines he had seconds to be able to determine um they actually accused him they said that he should have had enough time to go to another Airport, he, they found that that he had not enough time, so he had to put the, the plane into the Hudson, so we know what happened there. You know, those are and he, even though when he was on trial, he stuck to his, his, his rights, and he knew what he was doing. He actually had something like this, not entirely like that, but something occurred in his past that, that made him better. So again, see, that's emotional intelligence. So uh, going back to the hot dog, that he has to have that in case, you know, something happened. But I also incorporate the spiritual intelligence. Now, it, you know, we, when you say spiritual, it means a lot, right? I mean, it could mean religious. It could mean some some other fulfillment that people have. But it's that um, the spiritual intelligence is having that charity component that that doctor is not thinking about anything. He's focused on the moment. He's not thinking about when he's going home, you know, what car he's driving, how many houses he has, whatever. Maybe he's blessed and he deserves that. But he's in the moment recognizing that person there on the operating table, you know, is is unique in the respect that you know, a spouse, perhaps, you know, a, a sibling, a parent, you know, somebody valuable in the community, somebody valuable at work. So so this person realizes that and does all that he or she can do at that moment to to make sure the operation goes successfully. 
And I would say that that would be the, the component that is also lacking today, that we need to think of the other person. So when you talk about love, love, Thomas Aquinas said, love is to will the good of the other for the other. And I would say, how many people are actually doing that these days? Um, and the answer might be not enough. Yeah. You know, as I listen to you respond to that question and, and kind of get into um, those various facets of, of sort of um, human psychology, it made me wonder, you know, was there a person who played a pivotal role uh, in your leadership journey that, or maybe your thought leadership journey uh, that, that helped you sort of shape and, and, and refine what, what you're talking about there? I mean, I, I like history like most people, and I would go back to, um, I mean, sure, my parents um, were very influential uh, in that. I'll get into that in a little minute. But, I mean, you think of something like Abraham Lincoln in, in history, um, rough time of, of, of this nation's history, um, you know, civil war, um, and, and, tr and him trying to hold fast to, to, to recognize that slavery was not right and to try to do anything that he could in his power to correct that wrong. But in his staff, in his staff, um, he had Republicans and Democrats. Um, he wanted the best of the best, and and he didn't necessarily want politics in that. He he didn't he didn't want people just because they were the right party. He wanted he wanted people in his inner circle to test him to 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 make sure he was doing the right thing. He wanted the right people, not the right position. You know, titles don't make people, um, and we all have found that in our life. I mean, you just have to go back to. The Braveheart. Everybody knows that movie, right? If I had to say, choose one word that was said in that um, by William Wallace to in encourage, you know, the Scots against this big um, English army, what would what would you say? What was the word? Begins. It's it begins been, with an F. It's been a, it's been a long time. Yeah, me too. Was, You're stumping me, Joe. I, I want to say <laughs> faith. I want to say faith. I, faith but I'm is, not sure. Faith is good, but it was freedom. Freedom. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. well, that was the marching call. In other words, we all want freedom. When you take away your freedom, when you take away your choice, then there's a problem there. So both you guys are very good at what you do. And to, to transform somebody, um, you have to, it's like a parent. You have, to, you know, we have children for those that have children. And we have to allow them the dignity and the honor and respect for them to fall every once in a while. Your clients, okay, you have to allow them, even though you educate them the best that you can, they still have a free will. They still have to fall if they choose to go they the sure, wrong way. They, they sure do, mm -hmm. Joe. Yeah. I mean, this work would be really easy if it weren't for those people. <laughs> So true. Hey, I want to kind of double click on something before we move on to a different topic. Spiritual intelligence, SI. Is this something that's always been a fabric of you, Joe? Or was there an, perhaps an aha moment in your career where it really became part of your leadership approach? Or was it modeled for you in some way, either by a leader that you worked with or a historical figure? How did this yeah. become a part of you? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I do read the Bible. I'm a Catholic uh, Christian. I mean, that's part of my faith. Um, I mean, but oh, look, I've, I've talked to Hindus and Buddhists and Wicca religion and agnostics mm -hmm. and atheists. And um, I, I quest knowledge. I want to know what makes them tick. I want to know that. See, the seek being a seeker of wisdom and the truth, you don't have to have a, necessarily a particular religion. We're just trying to help each other. Take the, Go to the next, like you said, Jim, you know, all... The, t the tide comes in and rises everybody. It's what you do with it that, you know, count. and this, I think, think the more spiritually intelligent we are, of course, you can be intelligent. There are a lot of smart people out there, but they don't necessarily do the right thing and for the right reasons. Um, but I, I think that aha moment is so I, I, I you know, having the, the Bible and having that blueprint, you know, sure. basic, basic commandments. I mean, I mean, it, if you, even if you don't believe, I mean, the first three are, are towards our relationship with God. The seven, the seven others are a relationship to each other. How can you say that, you know, honor your, your, your mother and father? Of course, you know, if, if they're good people, they could have some, some issues. Don't murder. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't covet somebody's, you know, property. And, and 
I mean, those are basics. I mean, who, how many can, can even honor those 10 commandments or even seven commandments? That's a difficulty right there. But I would say, Mark, to your question, I hope I didn't uh, move over to, but it's just the way we want to conduct ourselves, whether it's in the alliance or it's in mm -hmm. business, because, you know, we find that if, if we are authentic, you know, you know they say trust is, a, is the currency, right, that people really want. If, if people, your clients can trust you and, and they like you, uh, if all being the same, they're going to do business with you. And uh, that's, I, I think, that common thread that, you know, love is that common thread, authentic, you know, love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I, I feel like, you know, I mean, I've been in practice many years now. And I mean, I hate to admit it, but into my fourth decade. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and you know, it's, it's been an interesting, uh, trip, but I, I, I will say that I've always led with, you know, just try to treat the client the way I'd want to be treated, you know, don't nickel and dime people. I'm not counting minutes. I'm not, you know, I've seen okay. consultants charged by the 15 minute increment, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, we've got a job to do. Let's get it done. Here's the price. That's that, you know, there, and there's no going back on it. And, and it's really worked well, you know, for me. I wanted to pull this back around to the sort of the sales business development stuff um, a bit, because I think a, a fair chunk of our audience is, is probably interested in some perspective on that. Well, what do you see as sort of being broken these days in, in sales, you know? And, and, and are there any, you know, easy go-to solutions that we should be considering uh, to get, get that all back on track? Yeah, I'm... I wouldn't say it's the, it's the sales. I think it's the way that people do conduct their business, right? So it, it can be an it can be an engineer. I mean, you know, certainly sales is, is the easy part to look at. Um, but it's just a, it's the way you wake up in the morning. It's just how you view things. It's it's getting yourself ready for the day and having that attitude of, you know, how can I conduct myself? You know, you know, as a parent, and you have children, it'd be pretty, you know you'd be looking like a hypocrite if you, you if you told your children to do something and you do something else you know, whether you know how you relate to people and but if you you know i belong I'm, i belong to a number that's another thing too is that you know certainly i belong to a probably six or seven different trade associations mm -hmm. um you know i i was asked in my community to uh to help out and and i did i was appointed uh a DPW commissioner um, two years ago, and uh, I DPW. I mean, look, I'm a, I'm a business development manager in, in a medical device field and also other other fields. But they wanted me to come in because they wanted an uh, a, a, another person from the community um, to have an open view. Like, if you were from the community, how would you respond to this? And I did have to I did have to appear in front of the selectmen. We have a town. And I hope I made a compelling story. I was running against uh, someone that was uh, had been a, a, an administrator, a town administrator, well known. Um, he's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And but in the end, uh, I think I, I did make a compelling story that we have the same people running for the same offices. Why don't you get somebody in there and, and they can show the town members that, you know, anybody can can join in. And, you know, you learn on the job. And I have been doing that. We have some major projects in town. You know, in the millions of dollars, um, but yeah, that, I mean that's just one group. But I, I think I, I've got this pothole in front of my house. I don't know. Is that something? <laughs> yeah. I had a pothole in front of my my house. You know how long it took for me to get it? <laughs> yeah, no that's why you treatment. got to do it, Joe. <laughs> no special treatment. Excuse me, one second. Tell you, the allergies are killing me over here. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, you know, when I go to LinkedIn, you know where I go? I don't go right in the top. I go right down the bottom. I, I want to see what people are volunteering. I want to see what types of groups they belong to. I want to see some of their interests. I know you're, Jim, you're interested in um, in music. Um, and and Mark, you're interested in running. Mm -hmm. I, exactly, you know. So you, you, have to, you have to get to know people. And that's why we're here today. I mean, you know, on LinkedIn, we use it effectively. I've met so many so many people, and um, I'm blessed to, to be able to know that. And I ap appreciate that. I respect that. I'm really grateful for that. Um, but that's what I do. I look on the bottom. 
And, and okay, I want to, I want to, I want to go in that direction. I'm mean, sorry to cut you off, but you clearly, from your picture, you're interested in reading with all the books in the background. So, give us some perspective on maybe something you're reading right now that has really inspired you, or lit a fire in you, or really gotten your attention. What What's a book that's well, I mean, near and dear to you right yeah, now? I know, and I and I know, I know Jim has written a number of books. I think you're number seven, right, Jim? Yeah, seven so, coming out in uh, August. Thanks for I the can't, plug. I, I can't <laughs> wait. I'm going to get a copy of that book signed, I hope. Um, <laughs> but, you know, reading with gratitude, I, I mentioned that already, that 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 gratitude is – and then there's another book. I mean, I read about six books on a time, and I was never a reader. In fact, I hated reading when I was young. Um, my father had to make me read, and, and he said, you're going to read, you know, a certain amount of time. You know what I picked up? I picked Robin Hood. I, you know, I, I picked all these adventures and, and you know, and I, you know, Camelot and yes. I, I just wanted to go of his travels. You know, I, I wanted to know about that. I wanted to know about heroes. You know, what what made them heroes? What did they do? And and I would I would strongly suggest that some of that SI component made those heroes what they yeah. are, what they were. I mean, we have heroes amongst us now that stand up for for their rights, not just their rights, but rights of the people. And and those are the ones we we need to get to know more of. I mean, you know, everybody says, you know, they're trying to find good people, good friends. You know what? Be the friend you want to be. In other words, have you got your business taken care of? Are, are you developing yourself to be the best version of yourself? I mean, we say this all the time, um, but life is a continuous education. Be curious helpful because you know they they write country songs you know about this be humble and kind mm -hmm. was it tim mcgraw i i think okay. that's part of, part of it you know is okay. all right i gotta i gotta press you on this one though what's okay. one must read from your shelf maybe from your shelf behind you that you would put forth to the group as a recommendation well look, of course the bible's number one right okay so after that mm -hmm. i mean i'm i'm reading the the heart of business by hubert uh, julie and he was uh the the he came at the Best Buy when they needed him the most. Of course, they need him now, too, but he's retired. <laughs> he actually teaches at Harvard University, which is not – I live in you know, in the South Shore of Boston, or South mm -hmm. Shore, which is about 20 miles south of Boston. But that that fellow is, a, is genuine. If you're not connected with, with Herbert Jule, um, please do so. And the heart of business is one. Uh, but there's many. I mean, there is there are many books. I mean, Marshall Goldsmith has a few. Bob Bob Berg, the the Go Giver series. Um, Bob and I have become good friends, and the Go Giver book um, is 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 great. Um, Jeffrey Gittimer, um, his Yes book, you know, the Gold Book of Yes, and and that so that's that's having a book that's having an attitude of yes, you know, not no, but yes. Say yes before you say no. If it's a bad right. thing, you can say no. If it's a good thing, or you, you might, you know, like they all, all say embrace the, the being a right. Okay. I'm uncomfortable right now. I, you know, I'm looking for a new position. <laughs> so but so I'm, let, not smiling, I'm not smiling any less, right? right. Let, let, let's end on that. We've got time for one more sort of question and answer. And what would be the ideal opportunity or, or next career chapter for you, Joe? Yeah, I mean, the easy answer to that is, you know, if somebody looks at my LinkedIn profile, obviously, you know, you want to stick to what's near and dear to your heart. I mean, that that would be contract manufacturing, some aspect of the, of that. Um, but you know what? This time I said, Jim, I said, um, I'm going to work on trying to find a, a position that I I want to have, not that I need to have. Mm -hmm. You know, we all need a position, um, but I'm going to leave that up. You know, I, I, I do, I do believe obviously. And, you know, I think, uh, I think God has a plan and I just have to allow myself to, to be given over to that. And, it, and it's funny because to, to really accept that type of love, we have to allow God to get, to, to give him the position, the, 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 the being a position to love us. Isn't that funny? Somebody loves us that much, and we have to give him the permission to love us in that way because mm -hmm. we have free will. That, that's a, a great way to, to, to wrap this one up, Joe. Thanks so much for spending some time with us today and sharing your aha moments. Folks, it was uh, a pleasure uh, 
talking with, with Mark and Joe today. Hope you got something out of it. We look forward to seeing you next time on AHA Moments. So long, everybody. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.